Now, I've been trying to figure out why people generally don't like the flyweight division, but they'll watch other weight classes in MMA. So the flyweight division is 125 pounds, and for various reasons, people do not get excited about the division. They don't care when big fights happen in that division. They don't care when the champion usually fights, and that was evident when Demetrius Johnson, one of the greatest of all time, mind you, was dominating and even broke records when he was in the flyweight division, beating actually very good competition, yet nobody cared. People say he was too boring, he was too small, he wasn't finishing fights, which is absolutely not true. He's finished over half of his opponents as champion, which cannot be said for the likes of John Jones, George St. Pierre, etc. But people will say because Demetrius Johnson's competition was not that strong, which I 100% disagree with. The only reason Mighty Mouse competition did not look that strong is because they didn't have a big name. That is the only reason. Demetrius Johnson's competition is tenfold what people think it is. When you actually look at what's going on there, Demetrius Johnson dominated that division for such a long time. It's almost like if John Jones was the first light heavyweight champion, right? Everybody else would not look that great because they're just losing to him. He's the best guy. There's no changing of titles that there was with Shogun and Rampage, Lyoto, Rashad, all that. They're all exchanging the title. And that is what made them seem so great because they were all champions. They're exchanging titles. They're all fighting each other very competitively. They seem like they were all amazing. But whenever you have a dominant champion who shuts them all down and they never grab that title, do they look the same? Do they look as great? Well, that is what Demetrius Johnson did to the flyweight division. If DJ came there later, I guarantee the flyways would look a lot different than they are today. The narrative would be a lot different than today because Benavides would be champion. Ian McCall would be champion. John Dodson would be champion, etc, etc. They're all exchanging that title, so they all look better. But because they're all getting shut down by one guy, by one of the greatest of all time, people will just chalk it up as they weren't that good. Imagine John Jones holds the title. All those guys are trying to get at him and they just get knocked down by him. That's exactly what Demetrius Johnson did in the flyweight division. And I can absolutely go in great detail as to why some of these flyweights are as great as some of these former champions in the UFC, such as Joseph Benavidez. Arguably could be even greater than Shogun Hua, could be greater than Rashad Evans. I could point to John Dotson being greater than Gustafson, greater than, you know, I could go real in depth as to why specifically some flyweights are better than their heavier counterparts but the more important question is why don't people see it this way why do people have this negative view of the flyweight division i've been given like four or five explanations number one they're just too small i don't like watching smaller fighters in general number two the flyweights could not beat the heavier weight classes that's why i don't watch them in a hypothetical fight the heavier guys would beat the flyweights Therefore, they don't catch my interest. Number three, there's not a lot of finishes. There's not a lot of knockouts or anything like that. And that is probably due to how small they are. Number four, I would like to call it the Brennan Schaub explanation. And that is the fighters in the heavyweight classes are better because they have to be worried about getting knocked out with one punch. Whereas flyweight, it doesn't happen as often. The heavier guys cannot make one mistake because they can lose the fight. And number five, probably the one you hear the most when you watch flyweight fights with your friends. They're so small, I can beat them up. Look at them, they're like five foot four. I'm six foot three. I can knock them out, I could beat them in a fight. Now I'm gonna go and tear apart these explanations really quick and show why they're so contradicting. So number one, they're just too small of human beings. I hear this regarding their size, but these same people go and watch Vasily Lomachenko unboxing, they watch Nonito Donaire, they watch Manny Pacquiao, they watch Juan Mel Marquez, they'll watch Bantamweights, even though they're about the same size as the flyweights. In fact, Davis and Figueroa, who walks around 165 pounds, heavier than almost every single Bantamweight in that division the only two guys that are around Figueredo size are probably Jose Aldo and Marlon Moraes everybody else is smaller not in reality it cannot be the size argument because of what I just said bandweight division is around the same size as a lot of flyweights I've heard the narrative that people do not like to see the flyweight division because they don't think that the flyweights can beat heavier fighters in the UFC. Hypothetically, if they were to fight each other, right? A flyweight versus a heavyweight. Davidson Figueredo versus Stipe Miocic. Stipe will most likely win. That's why they watch the heavyweight division over the flyweight division. But with that same logic, there would be no reason to watch anything under middleweight. From flyweight all the way to welterweight, there is nothing that should excite you because they're not going to beat the middleweights, the light heavyweights, and the heavyweights. Middleweight, light heavyweight, and heavyweights can absolutely find ways to beat each other. Obviously, the heavier the fighter, the more favored they are to win, but it's not always a guarantee when you talk about everyone who weighs over 200 pounds, which is middleweight all the way up to heavyweight. So what is the reason to watch Habib and Conor McGregor and Max Holloway and Petro Young? What's the reason to watch these guys with that logic that they're not going to be able to beat someone like Alistair Overeem or John Jones or Israel Adesanya or Robert Whitaker? So I find a bit of a flaw with that logic because the same people who say that are the 
the same people who are very much excited for Conor McGregor or very much excited for Dustin Poirier. So it doesn't really make that much sense when you really think about it. The other narrative that was popularized by Brendan Schaub, ironically, is that in the heavier weight classes, there's more of a danger level, which means those fighters are better because they cannot risk making one mistake. One mistake and it's over. Anybody can knock anybody out. Any heavyweight can knock out any other heavyweight. This goes for the middleweights and the light heavyweights. And if you go by the numbers, it is absolutely true. The higher the weight class you go, generally you're going to see more finishes. The heavyweight division has essentially a 75% finishing rate. Light heavyweight has about 65%. Middleweight has about 60%. Welterweight has about 53%. Lightweight has exactly 50%. The only weight class that doesn't really follow that trend is featherweight. Bantweight division actually has more finishes than the featherweight division. The featherweight division has about a 45% finishing rate. Bantweight has about 49%. And then you got flyweight with 41%. When you look at the stats, it's actually not that much different from the featherweight division. So in the same narrative, why would you watch featherweight? They don't have as many finishes either, but I understand what the narrative is coming from. Heavier you are, the easier you could be knocked out, which is why you have to be more careful. In this theory, more skillful. There's a giant contradiction in this. Brennan Schaub's explanation of why the heavier divisions are better completely contradicts itself. For an example, the heavyweight division, anybody can knock anybody out with one single punch. That goes both ways. You could be knocked out or you could knock your opponent out with one punch. Now what happens when you have a division like that? There's less requirement of skill needed, right? Because you can always find that one punch to end the fight. The flyweight division doesn't necessarily have that. And it's why you find such skilled fighters in the flyweight division. Demetrius Johnson is the most skilled fighter we have ever seen compete in MMA. Henry Cejudo, one of the most skilled fighters we've ever seen compete in MMA. You could go down the list of the flyweight division and not even only flyweight, bantamweight, featherweight, the lower the weight classes go, generally the more skilled they are because they don't have that out of the pocket, I can knock you out with one shot like the heavyweights have. The heavier you are, the less skill is required to win. And that is evident of why you see the heavyweights being less skilled than the flyweights, generally speaking. Right? When we look at Francis Ngannou, for example, Francis Ngannou is the most efficient and the most effective striker we have ever seen in the heavyweight division. He knocks out everybody with one punch. With the least punch count, he's able to knock opponents out in a very short amount of time, shorter than anybody else. That is high efficiency in striking. Nobody wants to strike with this guy. But then you compare his striking skills to some of the flyweights. Is he technically as good in his striking as Demetrius Johnson, Askar Eskarov, as even guys like John Moraga, Tyson Nam, etc, etc. It's not even close when you talk about technical ability. They are so far apart in technique. There is a reason whenever someone asks, if every fighter was in the same weight class, who would come out on top? Why is the answer almost always Demetrius Johnson? Why is it always the lighter guys? Think about Demetrius Johnson. Johnson in the heavyweight division with more power. Would anybody beat him if he had the same amount of skill? Let's say medically and scientifically we're able to get Demetrius Johnson to the heavyweight division and be like six foot four. With the same skills, who would beat him? Nobody. Now let's do the opposite. Let's put Stipe Miocic or Francis Ngannou or someone in the flyweight division. Shrink them down to like 5'5", five 5'4", foot five, five foot and really diminish their power. Do they stand out in the flyweight division now? I would argue not. So that narrative that Brennan Shaw put forward extremely contradicts itself. And then here's the final narrative, and I guarantee this is the one you guys probably hear the most. People, mostly casual fans, would now watch the flyweight division because they think they can beat them in a fight due to how small the flyweights are. I guarantee whenever you're watching with your friends, whenever there's a flyweight fight on the screen, there is a point where you will hear someone say, I could beat them in a fight. Or if you talk to them about it, then you'll hear that out of them. Why don't you watch the flyweight division? Oh, look how small they are. I could beat them in a fight. Why would I watch this? It's a giant amount of ignorance. They do not comprehend the amount of skill needed to fight at a professional level, not only professional level, the highest level in combat sports. They cannot comprehend the skill level needed to do that. But what they do comprehend in their everyday lives, whenever they play another sport or something like that, size and athleticism usually trumps, right? Outside of elite martial arts, you generally see that to be true, even in street fights size and athleticism will usually win you the fight because there is no skill. Skill is the most critical. It's the most important thing in fighting in martial arts and combat, period. Size, athleticism, all of that gets completely trumped and overshadowed by someone with skill. But skill is something that you need to learn. Generally, the average person is not going to understand skill. They're not going to understand what is required because they don't have that understanding. They never trained before. They don't understand what is needed outside of what is their norm, size and athleticism. That is why they believe they could beat a UFC flyweight fighter. It is ignorance to its core. 
you know, even MMA fans, semi-hardcore fans say that, you know, an athletic six foot five guy with no skill can beat a UFC flyweight. And now the sad thing about that is, there is probably no way that person can ever change their mind besides if they go up against a flyweight or someone very small in the gym. And I always, always offer that to people who think this about flyweights. I say you can always find out yourself. Go to an MMA gym, local, wherever you want to go. You can go to TriStar if you want, if you want the high-end flyweights, go into the gym, call out the smallest guy you see in the gym without you training at all, just to keep your ego very big, challenge him to a sparring match, and tell him your intentions. Tell him, I don't think flyweights can beat me in a fight. This will be a very good experience. It would be a very humbling experience, and it would absolutely teach people the reality of skill. Now, of course, whenever I offer this to these kind of people, they do not do that. Obviously, they're not going to do that. Generally, the average person is much worse at fighting than they think. Most people believe they're better fighters than they actually are, and this is very much true even at the professional level. But there's another reason for professional fighters to be delusional about their own skills because they have a goal and it's their profession. It's something that's driving them. It's a passion of theirs that they want to reach the top. Regular people don't have that same kind of passion and same kind of goals to be the best fighter on the planet right? It's the same kind of delusion, but for different purposes. The average person's delusion is based off of ignorance. The professional fighter's delusion is based off passion, competition, and real belief. This is why every single fighter who has fought at a professional level believed that they are the greatest fighter who has ever stepped on this planet. Every single one has believed this, yet there's only room for a handful of fighters. Every single fighter believes that they would retire undefeated. They all know that they can be defeated, but none of them believe they will lose. None of them put it in their head that they are going to lose a fight. They think they're going to retire undefeated. Every single fighter for the past 150 years has believed this, yet how many fighters throughout history has actually retired undefeated? Only four. There have only been four fighters who successfully have become champions, beat the who's who, and retired undefeated in the past 150 years of professional combat sports. Rocky Marciano, Joe Calzaghe, Floyd Mayweather Jr., and Habib Nurmagomedov. Out of the hundreds of thousands to millions of fighters who have competed, only four have done it. Yet those millions of fighters have all believed that they were going to be that fighter that retired undefeated. Now grasp that level of delusion. Now times that delusion by like 10. And that is where the average person's delusion stands to them thinking they could be a flyweight fighter. It makes absolutely no sense. At the end of the day, the flyweights need to be respected. The smaller fighters of combat sports need to be respected more. It's weird that people won't watch flyweights in the UFC, but they'll watch featherweights in boxing. They'll watch the smaller Muay Thai fighters. It seems to be more of a shallow narrative or as much of an in-depth thought as to why they think the flyweights aren't as exciting and stuff like that. But as soon as they move up to bantamweight, right, the same fighter like Henry Cejudo, Cejudo was a flyweight, nobody cared. He moved up to bantamweight and now everybody cared. But he only jumped up 10 pounds. He didn't really change as a fighter. He was the same guy. So off of all this, I believe it all stems off of the flyweight narrative. Just that division. Not necessarily the fighters, but if the fighters are in that division, they all get like cursed. But if they move up to bantamweight, they're okay and people are excited. If they move up to 125, nobody cares. There's something about that division, man. So very interesting. Leave in the comments below what you guys think. If you don't care about the flyweight division, why is that? What is your personal reason for it? If you do care about it and don't understand the negativity about the flyweight division, leave it in the comments below. I'm very curious to see what you guys think as well. And I'll see you guys in the next video.